YouTube, this is Care Bear. I know it has been a while, as it always is when I finally get around to making another video. So I apologize for my absence. Um, it has probably been again over a month. I hope it hasn't been two months. But um, I am checking in and just wanted to kind of keep you guys updated on my journey. Um, I think it was three days ago, maybe four days ago, I actually reached my doctor's goal for my weight, so I was really, really excited. I actually reached 135.9, and then the next day after that I was 134.9, so I actually hit, you know, their goal for me was 135, so um, that was a, a, an unimaginable, seemingly unattainable goal um, at the beginning of my journey. I really did not expect that that was ever going to be... Um, a, a mark, what's the word I'm looking for, landmark, not landmark, but anyway, it's, it's a, it's an accomplishment I didn't ever expect to obtain, so it's been quite, a, quite a, an exciting thing for me. Um, I also wanted to talk about a couple of things, I'm pulling up my list because I made a list of a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. Um, it's kind of funny because over the course of this journey, and it'll be a year in March, a year next month, the end of next month, um, I've really learned a lot about myself and and the person that, I'm, that I still am, the person that hasn't changed, but I've also learned a lot about how I have changed, and it's interesting, I went to, um, I think I had talked about this a long time ago, probably, I think it was in November, um, that I had gone to a pre-op panel and my experience there, one of the things that I don't think that I talked about was that the host of the panel was a um, post-op patient, I think at like six or seven years out, and she was talking to the people who were post-op and we were all passing around our before and after pictures or the, the pictures that we had taken along our journey and we were all at different stages and stuff and she, you know, people were like, that's amazing that, you know, you look so different, you know, talking to myself and other people on, on the panel. And um, one of the things that she said was that she wanted to remind us never to put down the before pictures because that person is still the same person that we are. And, I, and that really spoke very, very strongly to me because I really feel like I look at the carry that was at my heaviest and I really feel like she had to be so much stronger in different areas than I am now. You know, she had to be much more confident in herself or she had to deal with, I had to, deal with situations where she wasn't feeling very confident, where I wasn't feeling very confident. I'm talking like it's a different person and it was, it, it, it is me. But now I don't feel like I, people judge me the way I, on, on the way I look. You know, it's like I feel like people have the opportunity now to judge me for who I am and um, you know so it's it's a it's a different way I see a different way that people treat me I see um, you know I, I don't know if I mentioned this in one of my videos the other day but I, I was shopping a while ago and I was in like the normal size clothes and I was pulling out the size that I wear and it was just like I was looking at the other people in the area and heavy set people and normal size I mean and healthy size people and I remember thinking to myself I bet they wouldn't ever guess by looking at me that I've gone through such a painful process to discovering this journey you know and um, and how fortunate and blessed I am now to be where I am and I just kind of fit in with the normal shopping size and the normal stores and it's such a great feeling to know that that's where my place is, but I don't look back on that carry and think, what a failure, um, because I still couldn't have done it without the surgery, and so I'm still the same person, and I'm just on the other other end of the the you know procedure and that gift and that tool. So that's great. Um, the other thing that I've noticed since the surgery and since the, the extreme weight loss is that I am freezing all the time. There are times when I don't feel like I can get warm enough, and um, my husband and I are always fighting. I mean, I he says that I went through to the dark side, and I I did. I you know, I mean, it was like we were always 
the heavy set people in the room who were wishing somebody would turn on an air conditioner, and as soon as we would get in the car, we would roll down the windows, didn't matter what time of the day it was or anything, and now it's like, he'll come home and I'll say, how's the weather out there, and he'll say, it's cold. It doesn't matter what it is, because he knows that I'm going to think it's freezing no matter what. You know, it could be 75 degrees, and I'm still, I need a sweater. So, I think that's funny. Um, I also wanted to talk, somebody had asked me to discuss hair loss, and it's something that I kind of feel like I'm, I, there are days when I still feel like I'm dealing with this hair loss and that I'm still dealing with trying to cover up the, the you know, parts of my head, mostly just like up at the top where I feel like I'm thinning. Um, but then I look back at pictures from before surgery and I remember going to the hairdressers before surgery and I've always struggled ever since I went through puberty and then especially after I had my kids, I've always struggled with having not a lot of hair up top, and I don't remember having gone through any more of a balding stage than I have right now, and really in comparison to before surgery, I don't really think that it's changed that much. So, um, I mean, my hairdresser kind of teaches me, like, okay, use the root boost, you know, spray before I dry my hair, blow dry it, and before I straighten it, so that it really kind of gives a fuller feel to the hair. Today, I actually parted my hair on this side, because I have um, a scar on my head. I have multiple scars on my head from uh, surgeries that I had a few years, one surgery that I had a few years ago where I had um, cysts removed, 12, 12 cysts removed from my head, and so I have scars in varying locations. But one of the largest ones is right in my part, right at the kind of where, where a cowlick kind of would be. But when I part my hair, it's almost like there's a the part and then all of a sudden a cul-de-sac of bald right around that scar. The scar isn't really obvious, but it just makes it look really bald. So I tried to do it on this side today to see if it was any different, and I kind of like it, so it might be something that at least I have some options to, to change it around. Um, I've noticed lately that I'm starting to feel very snacky again at night, like once the kids are in bed and if I'm watching TV or whatever. Um, so I've picked up crocheting again. I've had a renewed found love for crocheting. Shh, shh. Um, we have a bird that likes to talk when I talk very funny. And whenever we turn on the TV, all of a sudden it's like they want to carry on a conversation. Um, anyway, so I I wanted to share some of my creations because I don't want to be snacky. I want to keep my hands busy and my mind busy. So um, I've started doing um, scarves and I just wanted to show a couple of them to you. I've opened an Etsy store um, and I would love for you guys to check it out and give me any feedback. Um, and if you see any scarves that you really like, I would be happy to... Um, to uh, sell them to you to make them. If you guys have any special orders, I definitely do special orders. And this one is, and I've named all of the scarves. So this one is um, Garden. My daughter actually named this one. This one is Garden. The black and shh, shh, shh. the black and white one. This one is Hunger. Um, this one is Flower Falls because it kind of reminds me of a tumbling waterfall, but the colors of a, of a flower, so. Um, and then I have a small one that I made, a mini one that has a button on it, that you can kind of, you know, adjust it however you want. So these are my nighttime fun projects, and I will tell you, I love doing it. This is actually one of my most popular and favorites, because this is actually kind of like my baby. I created the pattern for this, and then I've made some scarves. So this is my bacon scarf. So as you can see, it kind of resembles the shape and the marbling of bacon. And seeing that I can't have the unhealthy, unhealthy portions that I used to, um, you know, I can still enjoy it by wearing it. <laughs> um, all right, I'm trying to wrap it up here because I only have a couple more minutes. Um, my Rings are huge. My wedding rings and my engagement ring are huge, so I've actually downsized to a different ring to top my wedding ring because this one I can just I can shake it and they'll come right off. So this is a smaller ring, so I'm planning to get them sized within the next couple of weeks. I'm excited for that. And Anderson M two 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 seven asked me if there are certain textures of food that bother me still, and I have gotten to a point now where. Um, Bread doesn't bother me as much anymore I, because I'm, I know to take really small bites of it and really, 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 really chew it. Um, but white meat still bothers me. In fact, I 
actually threw up at Disneyland, um, embarrassingly enough, <laughs> right, right outside the Dumbo ride, right near the restrooms that are near the Dumbo ride. And, um, it was horrible, but I was, and it was like, as soon as I put the bite in my mouth and I chewed it a couple of times and I was so hungry that I swallowed it before it was chewed all the way. And as soon as I swallowed it, as soon as I swallowed it, I realized, whoa, that was too big and that's going to cause some problems. And sometimes I try and like walk it out or stand up or stretch or something. And I could just tell, oh, this is not going to work. This is going to, this is going to be stuck unless it comes up. So, um, I was, my husband's like, what's going to go, what's going to happen? And I said, I need to try and go to the bathroom because this is not going to work. And I was so embarrassed, but as I was walking to the bathroom, it was like I had to throw up in the bushes. The greatest thing about having to throw up post-op is that it's like this much, you know? So it, it's more of like once it's up, there's that, the continual heaving I found, but it's not anything really else coming up, which is kind of nice just to get it over with. And, um, but white meat still bothers me. And so I really tend to shy away from white meat and I do dark meat because I need, I know it's got so much protein and I know it's so important that I would rather make sure that I get the protein in. And even though it's a fattier meat or not as healthy, I know that I can still portion it and I'm not eating in excess. I'm not eating it fried, you know, so it's like I can eat it, um, you know, and make that dark meat still a healthy, a healthy intake of protein. So, um, anyway, I just wanted to give you guys that information. And so, um, also with my new weight of 134.9, um, I'm 110 pounds, um, from what I was about a year ago when I did my very first full body shot, because that was one, I was 144 at that point. So, um, I just wanted to share that with you guys. That's pretty exciting for me. So 110 pounds down at 11 months out, almost 10, 10 and a half months. Be quiet. I, 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 I get shut. Oh, you quiet. Okay. Well, apparently I'm interrupting, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go <laughs> so that he can go ahead and sing all night if he wants. Oh my God, I quickly cover his cage. That's what I should have done before I uh, popped on. Anyway, I'm at my 10, 11 minutes now, so um, I will see you guys later and have a great night and um, have a wonderful Valentine's Day because I know I'm not going to be able to get on before then. My daughter's birthday's coming up and we have a camping trip and we're, we're going to be busy. So um, have a great night, you guys, and we will talk to you soon. And thank you very much for sticking with me, even though I've been such a miserable companion along the journey for, for you guys the last couple months, and I apologize. But um, thank you again for your support and for all of my fans. For all of the people who have subscribed, I thank you so much. You totally mean so much to me. And I, I recognize that you guys are subscribing. And I'm sorry I don't have the time to respond to everybody individually. But please know I do appreciate it. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.